Another seat in the house falls vacant by death. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is another declaration of truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. Yesterday afternoon, Representative uh, Jackie Walorski from the Indiana's 2nd District died tragically in a head-on collision on a two-lane highway in Elkhart County in Indiana. Two key members of her staff who were in her, in her car with her also died. We're going to talk about this incident, what we know about it, how likely it is to be an accident, very likely as it turns out, and in fact, oh, and in fact almost classic, but also why it might not be an accident and what possibilities the investigating authorities ought to look into. That is, if they want to do a thorough job and maintain the American people's trust. Before I get into any more detail, I do want to shout out to the sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. And be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of good merchandise there, including this t-shirt that I have selected for today, which reads, We have vase. The face you see on this shirt is that of Klaus Schwab, the conqueror of the people. That's what his name means, and that's what he most wants to be. Now, what do we know about the death of Jackie Walorski? Reportage of the incident comes from the South Bend Tribune, Axios, and WMNSFM. Uh, 95.3 megahertz to Mishawaka, Mishawaka, Indiana. The author of Ax author at Axios, Andrew Solander, the, tweeted out a link to his story. Now, I have a link to that tweet in the description. The collision happened at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, the Eastern and Central Time Zones split Indiana between them. The Congresswoman, her communications director, Emma Thompson, and St. Joseph County Republican Chairman Zachary Potts, that's uh, spelled with an E, not an A, were traveling southbound on State Route 19 in a sport utility vehicle. A 56-year-old woman, identified as Edith Schmucker, driving northbound on State Road 19, veered across the center line and struck their car head-on. First responders pronounced Ms. Schmucker dead at the scene and sent Walorski, Thompson, and Potts to a local hospital. All three died of their injuries. In fact, the reportage on this incident is inconsistent. The radio station, for example, switched the directions of the two cars. The Elkhart County Sheriff's Office straightened that out in their press release, to which I've also left a link in the description. The South Bend Tribune also reported some confusion about the circumstances of the crash. Listen to this. Indianapolis TV station Fox 59 reported Wednesday night that the department had retracted their statement and said the initial information may have been incorrect. The Tribune was unable to verify whether the with the department Wednesday night whether the statement had been retracted. Unquote the South Bend Tribune. A whiskey Tango Foxtrot was that all about? We don't know. The Elkhart County Sheriff's and Coroner's offices are still investigating, not the FBI. Now, before I start talking about how likely this is to be an accident, or not, I want to shout out to another sponsor, Bitnext. This is your replacement for Zoom, Slack, the Google G Suite, Microsoft Office 365, Dropbox, WeTransfer, and Chili Piper, among others. Unlike any of them, Bitnext protects your content and conversations so well that even the administrators can't see it. So this is your channel for secure comms, conferencing, cloud storage, and file sharing. Best of all, everything is back in, so you don't even need a cloud, a client software. If you have a browser, you can use Bitnext. Follow the link and give them a try. 28 days free of charge. Can't beat that with a stick. Okay. Head-on collisions are the deadliest of all accidents that typically happen on highways with only center lines to divide them. But that does not make them uniformly fatal. 
a study of head-on collisions on main roads in 2000, 2000 to 2002, to which I've left another, another link in the description, produce these results. Quote, 3,136 head-on collisions were reported. Out of these, 127 were fatal, were fatal crashes, and 235 produced incapacitating but non-fatal injuries. That's from the abstract. The abstract further it goes on to say that such collisions happen usually because one or uh, one, someone veers across the line into oncoming traffic. Now that's why we rarely hear of head-on uh, head-ons on superhighways and other divided highways with their broad medians or concrete K rails. Now either one or both drivers are driving too fast, or the veering driver lets his attention wander. In fact, this was a classic scenario in the Watch Out for the Other Guy public service announcement campaign in the 1960s. Do any of you remember that? I do, and I can quote verbatim from the voiceover narration for the classic drifting driver scenario. Here's Bob Watson, nice guy with a nice family and a nice business to support that family. Today his mind is on that business, not on his driving. So, cue two horn blares and a screech of brakes, you get the business from Bob. This as Bob Watson car veers across a double solid center line. An even shorter version involving a car trying to pass another and hitting an oncoming car has this voiceover narration. Guess who Sid and Gladys ran into last weekend? Hank and Marilyn. So yes, accidents happen. We've all known this for years, decades even. But suppose something else is going on. What sort of thing should the sheriff or the coroner look for? First, what were the conditions of the two cars? Did anyone tamper with a Walorski car or modify the Schmucker car in any way? Did either Schmucker die in the crash or shortly before it? Might she have had a heart attack at the wheel? Now, from my training and experience with autopsy pathology, I would advise the coroner to ask for her medical record and to look for causes of sudden adult death syndrome. This is not your typical forensic case in which all you're investigating is mechanical trauma. At Vanderbilt University Hospital, I did several autopsies under circumstances requiring me to forward a copy of my report to the medical examiner from Middle Tennessee, and I always investigated the deceased's medical condition to determine whether any disease contributed to a crash and to what degree. We also, in this era, have to consider possible homicide. Now, who would have a motive to kill Jackie Walorski de deliberately? The search engines show no record of any death threats against her, but other Republicans have received death threats, and some have survived <laughs> attempts to kill them. Her most sensitive committee assignment was as ranking member of the House Ethics Committee. Now, that committee did have several investigations pending. Now, the Ethics Committee is a place for those who hold reputations for working with members of the opposite party. It is not a place for hyper-partisan members like the Judiciary Committee. So I tend to doubt that her committee work played a role here. <laughs> but you never know. Now, given how long before midterms this incident happened, Indiana law requires a special election to fill the vacancy. The two state party committees rather than holding primaries, are going to handpick the candidates for that special election. But the Republican committee must also select another candidate to run for the full term. The two elections will almost certainly coincide. They'll be on the same bout. Link in the description of the article, to the tweet by the Axios author to his article, to the press release from the Elkhart County Sheriff's Office, to the main head-on collision study and the conservative news and views. I have another link to the awesome online store and a bit next. As I also mentioned, 
And if you like what you've heard, you can like this video. And on the end screen, I'm going to leave I'm going to leave a subscribe link and a link to uh, another another recent uh, obituary that I've done. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.